Code Explain says hi. So for today we're going to talk about how to filter out our to-dos. So for example, if I go and click on add new to-do and then I type in something and I'm going to add this to-do to today and then I'm going to choose personal for the project. If I click on add to-do, then you can see it under today. If I click on personal, you can see it there, that's good. But if I click on other, you still can see that to-do which is not right. So when I click on other, when, when other is selected, I just want to show all the to-dos that are under other. If I click on work, you can still see it there, which is not right. So let's go and see how to filter out our to-dos. So when the user clicks on one of these items or one of these projects, we need to go and filter our to-dos array. So if we, for example, clicks on one of these items here, we need to filter our to-dos by date. And if you clicks on one of these projects, we need to filter out our to-dos using the project name. Now let's go and see how do we filter these to-dos. First, we need to go under our folder hooks and then into our index.js and we need to export a new custom hook or new function called use filter to-dos. This use filter to do's we need two arguments, the to do's and the selected project. The selected project will be a string, one of these, today, next seven days, all days, personal, work, etc. And the to do's is going to be an array of all our to do's. Now, at the end, our use filter to do's hook will just return the filtered to do's. So, in this case, I'm going to go and declare some state. And I'm going to initialize my filter to do's with an empty array. So I'm going to go and filter my to do's. And what I will get is an array which is called filtered to do's. Now I'm going to go and use effect hook. Why? Because I need to run my effect or to filter to do's only if the to do's has been changed or my selected project has been changed. So here the second argument for my use effect will be an array with to do's and selected project. So now whenever one of these has been changed, I'm going to go and filter out again my to do's. Now all the logic to filter out my to do's will be inside here will be my effect. So here we're going to get our to do's as arguments and then we're going to filter those to do's based on the selected project and then I'm going to get an array called data which has all the filtered to do's and now all I'm gonna do is set the filtered to do's to the filtered to do's the data here now let's go and talk about this logic here now for our today to do's which means when the user clicks on today in this case I'm gonna go into my to do's array and filter out the to do's using the date now I'm going to go and use moment. Why? Because I need to get today's date. So moment will now return a JavaScript object, which is the today's date. I'm going to assign this to a constant called today date. But now my date here of the to do's is a string, which means I'm going to need to format this to the same format here, which is month, day and year. And then I'm going to call my today date here, today date formatted. So I know that this date here is formatted. Now I'm going to go inside my to do's array. And for each of the to do's, I'm going to check if the to do that date is the same as today date formatted. And this condition here will be passed to my filter method. So if this is true, I'm going to filter out those to do's and filter will return an array, which is going to be my filtered to do's. Now for the next seven days to do's, when the user clicks on next seven days, I'm going to go again and filter my to do's based on the date property. Now let's go and see an example here. Let's take for example this to do here. This is its date. I'm going to call this to do date. Now let's say that today date or today's date is this date here. Now what I need to check is the number of days of this to do date from my today date. If it's less than seven, then I'm going to show that to do. If it's more than seven days, I'm not going to show it. Or if it's in the past, 
I'm not gonna show that also. So the difference between these two dates must be between 0 and 6 or 0 and 7 not included. So I'm gonna use a method by moment which is called def for difference. This is used to calculate difference between dates or JavaScript dates. So to do date here it's not this string but this string has been passed using moment and now to do date is a JavaScript date object. Now because this one here is created by moment now I can use this def uh, method. You can't use this on a regular JavaScript date object. Now the first argument here for def is going to be today date. It's going to be another date. So now def it's going to calculate the difference between this date and this one. It's like saying to do date minus today date. So to do date minus today date in days it's going to be 31 minus 28 which is going to be 3. And now the second argument for my def method here it's going to be days. It could be minutes, seconds, years, months, whatever you want. So here we need the difference between these two dates in days. And this will return 3. Our method def will return 3 in this case. Now if we check 3, 3 is less than 7 and greater than 0 because we don't want the dates in the past because a date in the past, if a date was in the past, this will return a negative number. So we need all the numbers that are greater than or equal to zero and that's how we know that it's not in the past. So now all I'm gonna do is I need to take my to do that date and this is its format. I'm gonna pass these two arguments to moment. Now moment knows that this date here, my to do date is in this format and it's gonna be easy for it to format it into a JavaScript date object. Now I'm going to go and set this to a constant called to do date. Then I'm going to do the same thing for my today date formatted we've seen before. I'm going to give it also its format. I'm going to pass them to moment and then I'm going to assign them to a constant called today date. Now to do date and today date are both a JavaScript date object created using moment, which means I can go and use the diff method on both of them. So I'm going to say the same thing we've used here to do date dot diff today date in days and I'm going to assign this to diff days. So the difference in days. And now all I need to do is to check if the diff days is greater than or equal to zero and the diff days is less than seven. If this is true this means that our to do date it's not in the past and it's not in the next week. Now I'm gonna go and return this condition and pass it to the filter method. Now for the all days to do's, when the user clicks on all days, I don't need to filter out the to do's, I'm just gonna go and return my to do's array itself. I don't need to do any filtering there. And now when the user clicks on one of the projects, I will go and filter out my to do's using the property project name. So I need to check if the project name of the to-do is the same as the project the user has clicked on and then I'm going to pass this condition to my filter method and filter all the to-dos based on this condition. That's it for the logic part, now let's go and see this in action. Like always we need to bring in uh, or to, uh, download the files from the last part, the part 18. So I'm gonna go and paste the link to that part uh, into down git and click on download. Once you download the file go into the folder run npm install and then you're good to go. If you already have the files just open your text editor, go into hex index.js and now I'm gonna go and create a new function or new custom hook called use filter to do's. So this needs two arguments, the to-dos and the selected project. And then uh, at the end I'm going to return the filtered to-dos. So this is going to be a state. So I'm going to use the use state hook. So filter to-dos, set filter to-dos and then use state. And here I need to 
initialize this with an empty string. Now I'm going to use effect hook and this takes in a function and the second parameter is going to be an array to do and select project if they change we're going to run our effect. Now I'm going to create data uh, a variable then at the end I'm going to set filter to do's with the data. Now let's go and do the filtering. So if the selected project is today I'm going to set data to do do's that filter and the condition here is going to be to do that date is equal to today date formatted. So we need first to create today date formatted using moment. So I'm going to bring in moment. It's there. And here I'm going to format this uh, to month, day and year. Okay, now if else if the selected project is going to be or is the next seven days, I'm going to go and data set the data to do that filter. In this case, I'm going to need some logic. So I'm going to use those color braces. So I'm going to create a constant called to do date and I'm going to pass the to do that date to a JavaScript date object using moment. And then I'm going to do the same thing for today date. I'm going to go and format the today date formatted. And then I'm going to go here and create a const called diff days to calculate the difference in days between the to do the two days, the to do date difference and today date in days, of course. And then I'm going to return the condition to filter out my to do's, which is going to be diff days is greater than zero and diff days is less than seven. Now, else if the selected project is all days, I'm going to go and return all the to do's. So no filtering. And now else, so if none of the above is true, then I'm going to filter my to do's using the project name. So to do that project name is our selected project. And that's it. Now I'm going to go into my context here and I need to use my hook that I've created. I'm going to call this filter to do's equals use filter to do's. We need to bring that from hooks and this needs the to do's and the selected project. Now, I'm instead of passing the to do's, the whole array, I'm just going to pass the filtered to do's. And then we're going to keep the name to do's so I don't need to change it in all my components. So that's why I'm not using the shorthand anymore. I'm just going to say to do's as my filtered. So now, instead of passing all the to do's down, we're going to pass only the filtered to do's. Now, I'm going to go and see if it works. So, so I'm going to go and add a new to do. I'm going to call this today. I'm going to select today's date and then I'm going to click on personal or select the project personal. If I click on add to do, you can see it under today. If I click on next seven days, you can see it that it's been added to Wednesday. All days, you can see it. Personal, other, you can see it. Work, you cannot. So which means that our to do has been filtered. Now I'm going to go and add a new one. I'm going to call this yesterday. I'm going to add it to yesterday. If I click on other or work and add to to do, if I click on personal, you can't see it. Other, you can't see nothing. Work, you can see it there. If I click on today, you cannot see that to do. Next seven days also, you can't see it. All days, you can see that it's there. Now, if I click on add new to do and then add a new one for Tomorrow, I'm going to choose tomorrow, 1st April. Then I'm going to add this to other, add to do. You can see it on all days. You can't see it on today. You can see it on next seven days. So this one is today's date. This one is tomorrow. Now if I click on personal, you can only see this to do, other, and work. So we just filtered out our to do's. That's great. I hope you enjoyed this part. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Take care and see you in the next one.